So bad news everyone, we had to amputate Squidge's paw. Um, hopefully it'll grow back soon though. Cheer up buddy. So when I was at Disney last month, I went to a water park and it's the one day I didn't really film because water. And I stepped on a stone. I think I might have broken my foot <laughs> in doing it because that happened a week ago and my foot hurts a lot still. Basically like there was just a pebble and I put my full weight on it while walking on right in the dead center of my heel. And you know that scene in Avatar where like Aang hits a rock and his like chakras go all crazy? That's what I felt happened to me. Like I felt like a shock just go through me from what was so small just stepping on a rock but it made me feel sick for the rest of the day and I still don't feel good and it hurts to walk. So can you, is that, have, what have I done? Have I bruised my bone or have I, what did I do? Ow, ow. Ow. You want to go, Pinky? Yeah. Go. Oh, oh, she knows. No, it's, it's not as if I just tense enough, she'll go. Yeah. There you go. All right. She, he's sure about it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Don't fall over. She's so trusting of you. She, she's drooling an insane. Let her go. She's drooling too much. I've never seen anyone turn playing video games into such a sport before. So I'm here at Eddie's today to go into his garage and pack up all the merch for a convention or two. Convention season. It's coming. I'm tired. What are you doing? I'm making you a map. You're making me a map? Yeah. Oh, of the garage. Yeah. At the very front is the TV. Be careful of that. Don't knock it down. Um, it's on top of the trunks, right? So uh, don't knock down the TV. Don't knock down the TV. What if I really want to? Don't. All right, door. Check. Found that. Uh, oh, God. Stay. Stay. No. Bubbleheads, you say? Well... Couldn't hurt to take a couple. Four bobbleheads for the people who know to ask for them. Cool. <sighs> Fuck my leg. Ow. Oh boy. Sorry, let me just... Liam? What's going on with your underwear? Liam, what the fuck is going on with your underwear? Okay, all right. No, 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 no. <laughs> Wait for Liam to move. Christ, Carol, no, no. You know what? Yeah, you know yeah. what? If it works, it works. <laughs> Billy, you should not be here. Catch. <laughs> Good form. Bad aim. Oh! oh fuck yeah! Billy, you want to throw a knife? Yeah. Let's, let's throw Billy. Come on, Billy. Let's go. I'm going to throw the Billy at the target. Come on, Billy. Let's go. Liam, can I throw Billy? Oh, yeah. It's technique. It's, yeah. Um, like Over the shoulder. <laughs> Oh my God! Father help! So it's the King's coronation today, which means it's an excuse to drink alcohol. I fully slept through the coronation. Uh, the jet lag won, and I don't fucking uh, care anyway, but I'm hanging out with my friends who smoke, which means they leave me alone a lot while they go do that. It's fine though, because I got gin. All right, let's, uh, let's build a planter. This is a metal saw. Not appropriate what I'm doing. <laughs> this saw is so fucking blunt, I've been doing this for five minutes. Alright, we need holes for water, so... Alright, it's not pretty, and I'd do about ten things differently if I were to start over. Namely, things that would have avoided splitting the wood, and also maybe getting a piece of wood that wasn't completely bent. Uh, but it's coming along. Gonna grow some strawberries or something, maybe. So Charlie's put on a YouTube video called 2000's UK Nostalgia Adverts Compilation. <laughs> uh, for some fucking reason. Leave me alone! And my favorite thing about this is, of course, one of the first ads that comes on is the Crusher ad, which I'm sure plenty of us will remember. But what you may not know is that the baby from Baby With A Gun is the child of the guy who made that advert. And that's a bit of trivia you have today. 
So I've made it to 2016 in my photo album. I'm going through every photo and I'm adding the names of all the people in the photo, any significant information from that day, uh, the location and the date for like every photo before I'm putting it in the album so that I do have this little like time capsule. So as my memory fades me, I can just jump in and remember things and I am aware that I'm not very normal. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to figure out the date for one of these photos. The easiest way to do that for me is to look up a video that I know was filmed around that time. And in searching my name into YouTube, I found uh, a video about me that was a couple of years old. And it was a video essay about how I am terrible. I don't wanna, I don't wanna spoil the surprise. Uh, I, there are sometimes nice videos about me and I, I didn't wanna watch it. I don't need that shit. Uh, but I did check the comments just to kind of gauge the vibe of the video and it seemed to be relaying the greatest hits, you know, that I'm fat, the Dead's World Legacy was a travesty uh, and that my videos are just generally lazy and bad. What struck me though was how much healthier my reaction was to the existence of that video than how it has been in the past because back in the past I would look at stuff like that uh, as a form of validation. Not good validation, but it would validate the negative feelings I had about myself. It would be like, okay, great, we're on the same page, I am a piece of shit. You know, I was mentally ill and I, I really didn't like myself and, and this really fed that and, you know, it, it, it justified the feelings, right? And, and, and those kind of videos and those kind of people and those kind of comments have always been in the minority anyway, but they were the only people that I agreed with for many, many years and it was bad. And now I'm just at a point where I just don't care. And for the most part, I see it for what it is, you know, I can take and I'm open to constructive criticism, but just saying you're, you're fat as world sucks is like very constructive. You're right, I'll hit the gym and then I'll jump in a fucking time machine and go change all that, shall I? It's also just weird. Like I see it for what it is now and it's very strange because it's not normal to have that strong of an opinion on someone you don't know, on someone that does not affect your life in any way. I think I've already said this recently, but it really is very strange because I'm just some guy. And I think a lot of people hold me in, you know, undue reverence because I made some things that were very significant to them in their youth, you know, things like Astor Movie and, and Ed's World and stuff. And therefore they put me on a pedestal that I'm not really on. Because I'm just some guy. I'm some stranger who makes videos on the internet sometimes. I'm not a rich, famous, like celebrity or a politician or really anyone that's had any impact or effect on their lives. And so the amount at which these people get vexed and angry is simply not normal. It is weird to have this strong of an opinion on me and I now see it as that because I'm just some guy and I know that now. I'm not some fucking demon, some monster, some piece of shit. I'm just a regular human that's flawed and has got his eccentricities. Yeah. I'm just normal men. I'm just innocent men. Oh shit, here we go again. <laughs> like the meme. Yeah. All right, I just need little tacks like this, but I can only find them loose. So they've got a few seconds to manifest before I start stealing. So I had to pick up a new lighter for the house yesterday. And when I'm outside the store, Charlie points at one of the lighters in the window, which is of a naked lady. And she said, I want that one. Charlie's bisexual, so I guess she can do that. I go into the store and I say, I'd like to get a lighter. And he says, there are lighters right here in front of me. And I say, no, no, I want one of the lighters with a naked lady on it. And he's like, ooh, well then we'll have to go to the cabinet. So we trundle on over to the unlockable glass cabinet. And he reaches in and grabs a lighter out completely at random. And let me tell you, I'm really glad he grabbed the right one because I was not looking forward to having to go, no, no, sir, not that naked lady the other naked lady. But luckily, we got the right one first time and he proceeded to try and bond with me over it going, oh yes, very beautiful woman. And I'm like, sure. So this man must've been very confused because he had some grotty little pervert come in going, I want a lighter with a naked lady on it. Who was then immediately going, I don't care. I have no strong opinion on this at all. So thanks for that, Charlie. You do not like- What are you doing? Oh, I'm putting in these nails I bought with my- Oh, ow, ow, oh the good ow. news. Ah, fuck. Wow, look at all them rocks. Big bag of mud. <laughs> mud going everywhere. Is that the scientific method? I mean, do it not be working? <laughs> that seems pretty well watered, right? Oh, she's okay. Clean this up. Beautifully done. 
I'm a genius. There's a little bit more on there. I don't know how much we're supposed to do. Oh, God. I'm just going through my old photos on my computer just to make sure that there are none I've missed that I want in my photo album. I'm around the ages of 15 and 16 and I just keep full body cringing. Oh, fucking top hat to prom, you motherfucker. Oh, you're so fucking cool, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? No. Ah! God. Oh, yeah. Write your name in sand. Why not? I've been Tom Scar for a long fucking time, dude. Like, those photos are all from July 2006, so I was I just turned 16. I made my YouTube account two months before that. God damn it. <laughs> this is why I'm so fucking glad that I grew up before things like the Manosphere and the alt-right showed up because I 100% would have been sucked down that fucking rabbit hole, dude. Look at this guy. Do you think he wouldn't be calling women females? Oh, God, I so narrowly dodged a bullet. All right, I'll admit, I am kind of serving here, but it was my granite's funeral, so maybe not the time or place. My nose is red because I pulled out some nose hairs, and now my nose hurts. Good job, me. I would very much like to be spending this weekend playing Tears of the Kingdom and watching Eurovision and just hanging out and being a goofy little guy. But I'm supposed to be going to a convention uh, up in Telford. However, the plans to get a courier to bring my merch up there have not gone ahead. So I'll now be carrying all the merch that I can carry. And it hasn't been confirmed if I have a hotel room yet. So I might have to get on a train with loads of merch not knowing where I'm going. I might just not go. And I've never bailed on a con before because I just, I think it's unfair on the people that have booked tickets to see me. But this might, I might just, I might just not. I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> just reminds me back of being like 19, 20 years old at our first cons, bringing a hand truck full of just posters and hoping for the best. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? Are you entirely having a giggle. There's a fucking rail strike today. I got a little notification for a rail strike, but when I checked, I thought it was just happening in London. I didn't know it was the whole country. The next train to this event, which starts at 9 a.m. tomorrow, is at 8.40 and would get me in at midday, making me probably four hours late to the opening of the event. I... <sighs> So apparently, if I can get to Heathrow Airport in the next two hours, I can get a car to Wales with two random Norwegian men I don't know. Off we go! Okay, so we have a fan, but what are some other swear words? Alapunta? Give me shit, what's like shit? Uh, you can just say shit. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's no fun. Penis is penis. Fantastic. I was in such a frantic rush to pack everything down yesterday that I managed to forget pretty much everything I need to actually do a con. The really interesting stuff like rubber bands and sticky things to stick stuff up with. So, time to go to the shops and beat the front doors. Oh God. Man, I made it before shoe zone. That was close. Gotta get rubber bands. Gotta get fluorescent stars. Where are the sticky boys? Sticky boys. Let's go to work. King fascists. This is a lot of them. Yo! What did you think about my Crocs? We out here with the Shrocks. <laughs> and the Shrocks. We got the Shrocks on. Yeah. So the con's going fine. Uh, people are lovely. It's very strange doing it with no one with me to help because I basically can't leave the table. It's very exposed. And if I walk away, people could just steal stuff. So I kind of have to stay by the table all day, which is a bit weird. Well, I've sold all my match. I think I might go home. Remember, kids, always cut towards yourself. Ooh, new pins. Ooh, we got some new pins. Just in time for MCM. Nice. So I went to a meeting yesterday, which is not why I'm wearing a shirt. I'm just wearing a shirt because I felt like wearing a shirt. That hasn't stopped dozens of people saying things like, wow, are you on your way to a meeting today? It's just a shirt. I just, do I look like that much of a piece of shit the rest of the time that just putting on a shirt makes that much of a radical difference? Because that's telling. I went to a meeting with my agents um, yesterday because surprisingly enough, I don't deal with the business side of brand deals. That That is their job. They, they do the talking. They go like, trust us, he's not a complete maniac. And then the brand deal goes through and they get a cut of the money from the brand deal. They go num, 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 and, and everyone's happy. So we're talking about future things. We're talking about uh, um, the kind of brands that I'd like to be working with, the kind of videos I'd like to be making. I was mostly saying like, I really want to get like a series of sponsors 
so that I can justify making a bunch of animated story times. We did like one, two, three years ago, and I want to make more, but ideally I'd like to have monetary support because making an anime story time costs a lot of money because animation is expensive. And then they start talking about podcasts because they have like essentially a podcast division and they're like, what, you should have a podcast. Why don't you have a podcast? And I said, look, I know this is going to be the first time a straight white man has ever said this, but I don't think I need a podcast. I don't think I have anything really that interesting to say. I don't think I'm that interesting as an individual. I've not got anything to add really to the to the ecosystem that hasn't been done a hundred times before. The podcast ideas I've had over the years have included Cusack Attack, where I watch every John Cusack movie. I want to do a podcast called Internet Dinosaur where I interview all the people from the internet that have made like you know the memes from yesteryear um, who have been around a real long time Neil Cicerega uh, the Weeble you know all that all that type myself <laughs> and, and, and we were about ready to move on when I just threw out one idea that I had but I knew I couldn't make called This Person Is Dead and I shouldn't have said it out loud because as soon as I pitched it they were like we have to make this and I'm like I don't we can't. So for a little bit of context, many years ago, uh, I was asked to come down to London. Wait, I already lived here. I was asked to remain where I lived and hang out with this guy who was a fan uh, who had terminal cancer and he just wanted to meet me and a few other YouTubers before he died. And there was already a shoot that he'd been invited to, so I went to that shoot and that's how I wound up in this video. I don't know if I can, oh, man. No. <laughs> Tom, no! And we hung out with him uh, for a little while. He was a cool dude. His name was Carl. And chatting to him was a really interesting experience because he had such a unique perspective on life. And I know there was such a calmness to him. There was such a fearlessness. And the whole thing was very surreal. I, I, I don't really know how to explain it. And, you know, I thought, hey, would this be interesting to do more often, to talk to people who are in this state? Because I don't know how to explain it in a way that doesn't sound grotesque, but I, I wish other people could have heard the things he had to say um, because he just had a completely unique perspective and he had his priorities straight. I thought, what if I interviewed more people like him uh, for a podcast? That's it. And, and, I, and I guess the unique selling point would just be that, you know, the, the episodes are recorded in advance and, and they, they do come out, unfortunately, after the people have have died. I think it would be interesting I, and I think it would be uh, cool to hear these people's perspectives uh, and to, you know, pr preserve those perspectives in a little time capsule. But it has so many ethical and moral issues. It has, lo it's a logistical nightmare. And it's just like, I, I don't know. And, and also, God, I would, the amount of therapy I would also need. Uh, and I need to definitely do like a course on like how to, you know, not be deeply fucking inappropriate and actually navigate these conversations without fucking their day up, essentially. So there's so many things that would need to be done to do it right, because that's the thing, is that like, I think it's an interesting idea, I think it could be really lovely, but also it could obviously have fucking loads of problems. Like, if this did badly, everyone would say, no duh, dude. No duh. Yo, Rick made cookie. He did, all by himself. Yo, for free. Stop it! Um... <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Rick personally made this he, with no help. With no help whatsoever. Not one bit of help is, is for oh, free. Stop it! Yo. All right. It's barbecue day, Pinky. Yeah. Let's bust this bad boy out. Oh. <laughs> oh God, we have some work to do. Step one. Burn the dirt. Burn it away. Ow, fuck, that's hot. Fuck, ow, fuck. Step two, scrape the dirt. Step, uh, fucking three, uh, get the dust and the shit away. Fuck off, shit. All right, well, it's generally a rusty barbecue, but I think I did a pretty good job. Oh, look at the fly, cute, sexy girl. Give us a twirl. Yo! That was so fresh and fly. Chloe's here. So in case you haven't guessed, it's a barbecue day. I'm gonna have people over and we're gonna do a barbecue. Uh, the only goals I have for a barbecue is the people le leave fed and no one has died. As long as it goes better than my VFX artist Dave's barbecue, it's a win. He's fine. Now. Creamy man, stop! Creamy man, no! Creamy, 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 creamy. <laughs> Creamy. Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. That was thrilling. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. <laughs> what a rush. Yeah, honestly, the man was like, what do you want? And I said, I'll have a cone with Mr. Whippy and strawberry sauce. And he was like, yeah, and I paid on cards. <laughs> 
We're just a bunch of childless millennials Having fun cause we don't have kids I am in my thirties And I'm beginning to think that I've made a mistake So I always thought I would have kids at 27 years old That was the age my mum turned, the day she had me You know, so it became my lucky number And I thought, yeah, 27, that's a good, that's a good age You know, you're 40 years old when you have a 13 year old It, it all rounds up quite nicely And then I got super, super depressed To cut a long story short, I lost the will to live You know, when I started seriously like the complete history of me and even th this photo album I thought I was truly making a complete history of me because I didn't think I was gonna be alive into my 30s I was not doing well and then I didn't die and I got over that dark place you know I came out of that that, that space of, of suicidal ideation and and, and, and stuff but it, it wouldn't be for another couple of years until I realized that I hadn't reactivated that part of my mind that thought long term Charlie was talking to me and was like, hey, what what are we doing? Is there any sort of plan here? Or are we just living day to day? And the answer was yes. I Oh shit, I am. I am just living day to day. I, I'm not thinking about the future. I'm not thinking about getting married. I'm not thinking about having kids. I'm not thinking about anything beyond just surviving another day because that's just where I'd been for so many years. And the process of trying to think long term again and ask myself what I actually want has been going on for a couple of years now. One thing that's been coming up a lot is like, oh God, do I want kids? Should I have had kids? You know, I, I'm now looking at photos of myself, things I remember at a point when my parents were younger than I am now. And that's just a bit of a mind fuck of like how, mu how much younger they were than, than I am when I I was around and walking around and forming memories and I, I don't know it's hard to explain but it's really been weighing on me and I don't have an answer because it's it's a scary world to bring a child into I mean it, it kind of always is right but you know you, you want to be able to say like oh I'll bring a kid into a world that I think is on the up that's going to be kind to them that, that's going to provide for them and it's like oh is it though or is it just getting worse are we descending into fascism is the economy crashing is the planet dying and also it's just like oh can I take that responsibility will I be a good parent all of this stuff right I, and I'm suddenly trying to like fast track that thought process of like oh I don't know I don't know so yeah this is just kind of a little crisis I've been having for a few months is it a midlife crisis I mean at this rate yes if I sort my health out maybe it's a, a third life crisis but I don't want to project this onto anyone else because this is just wh what I'm going through this is not something I would expect of anyone else it's been a lot to think about and nothing like day two barbecue because you got too much barbecue stuff left also pro tip if you're gonna have a barbecue uh, don't have it so close to your extreme meltable house. We decided to take a somber little walk through a graveyard. We're playing a fun new game called Find Someone Who Was Born or Who Died on Your Birthday. Someone died on my fifth birthday. I think probably quite a few people die on your birthday in general, but something to do. On one hand I support it, but on the other hand that is the funniest excuse for not cutting the grass around these graves. We meant to do that. We're, we're doing it for the bees actually. There's a whole ass fox. Look at him. Hi, hi, Mr. Fox. Bonk. Bonk. Ooh, gorgeous girlfriend gone on picnic. <laughs> Ow, oh, shit, fuck bins. Will they have melted? I don't know. Uh, don't make it look gross. Hold it up nicely. No, it's upside down. <laughs> wow, <laughs> chalky strawberry. I'm gonna eat it now. All right, pro tip, gang, if you're gonna bring chalky strawberries out, put them in some ice and individually wrap them. I'm very smart and I get an award. So when I started this year, I said that I really, really wanted it to be productive. And, you know, while I've got a lot of stuff done in my personal life, I haven't posted anything to my main YouTube channel in a long time, you know. Then it's entirely possible that I'll make it a year without posting anything to my main channel. And it's not because I don't have scripts, it's not because we haven't written anything. We very much have. The Confession 4. Pirate Detective. Don't press that button. Vet. How dare you. This absolute monster of a script. It's just that I have really lost the confidence to make stuff and feel like it's gonna be good. Like I needed a degree of arrogance and ego to just have absolute faith in my creative genius. And I don't have that now, right? So it's like, is this good? I don't fucking know. Is this the right way to deliver this line? Is this, is it funnier in this location or with this shooting style? And I used to just have the answer to that and be like, yes, you're funny, Tom, go for it. And I don't really have that now. I don't have that arrogance. I still have an ego, obviously. And I don't want to come back to YouTube with something mediocre. I really want to come back with something cool, a bunch of things. So I just kind of feel a bit stuck in between spaces. When we write the script that is the banger, 
it, there's an absolute banger that's going to pull us out of this almost depression creatively I'll, I'll know it you know I get I get one every couple of years you know videos like let me in and, and juice that makes your head explode like there's only one or two every couple of years that are like oh that's a that's 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 a banger well we've got some good script scripts I feel like we haven't got a, a banger yet Ugh. It's frustrating. I have really privileged problems and I'm aware of this. I did the math and I found out that roughly 7% of my photo album, which is supposed to cover my entire life, is photos taken inside this one building. It's deeply depressing. <laughs> All right, it seems we have a kids writing section over here. So it's for the, it's for the kids. Another May, another MCM. Can you fuck off, please? We're not open yet. He was not fixing the carpet. He wasn't doing shit. We've never had a health and safety issue before, but no one is fixing the carpet. I think one of the reasons that I don't feel comfortable charging for autographs and meet and greets is because you shouldn't have to pay when you're paying with this much time. So currently my queue starts right around there, goes around the table, behind this wall, sorry, wraps around the wall, comes this way, snakes about three times, and ends up here, and it's about an hour and a half. So... Yeah, I can't exactly charge for that. This is the most insane thing anyone's ever brought me. In like both a good way and like may maybe a bad way. Are you okay? Do you need help? Um, are you? Good. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, we managed to try and leave just as the train uh, entirely broke down. So let's have. Did you get dinner? Yeah. What if you got? Okay. All right, welcome back, guys, I, I... to British Boy tries American candy. Here we go. Yeah, guys, it's pretty good actually. I do like mint. So this is this gets gets a seven out of ten from me. All right, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. I'm a Tory. What it's worth, I do appreciate the absurdity of how early this month I was saying that people put me on an undue pedestal when I'm just some guy, when I also very much rely on being on that pedestal to survive. If people weren't coming up to meet me at cons and buying merch and finding me worthy of that pedestal, I would need to get a new job. I don't really have a point here, just that yes, I am aware that it's a bit mental. I don't have a normal life. My feet do hurt a lot. That makes it all balance out, right? My feet hurt, so I deserve this. Fucking no. Every time I started to feel a bit like, oh man, this this is this is tough work. I remember that there are people who work in retail and the service industry who do shit like that every day. They stand there, you know, eight, ten hours, whatever, every single day. And instead of having people coming up being really nice to them, they have people being shitty or at least just customers. Oh, but this is going to the printers. And that's going to the courier. And a little bit of that's going to the bank. Mm. Oh, Tom, why do you still use Tumblr in 2023? Well, no other website lets me click for fucking frogs. That's for sure. Oh, I can... I can play the frog? Uh, yeah, I'm... I'm, I'm staying here. This place fucking rules. So I'm heading home after a 10-hour meet and greet, which, while obviously very lovely, was still draining and had left me feeling a little emotionally raw. And I hop onto Twitter to see the photos that people have taken that day and you know, gauge the vibe. And instead of finding that, what I find is a couple of very spicy Twitter threads by some pretty hard right accounts. And the comments underneath en masse pretty much saying that I am a pedophile and a groomer. Not how I really thought that evening was gonna go. Basically, what had happened is at some sex education protest, a woman had printed off screenshots uh, from some YouTube videos, one of them being my um, porn talk video from eight years ago, saying that this is in the school curriculum, it's being shown to three-year-olds, and yeah, everyone's going, well, these are all pedos, we should kill them all. Really good, normal stuff. And a lot of people were replying saying, well, this is obviously not true, like, that's just a Tom Scar video, you're all fucking idiots. And the thing is, it's not not true. So I made my uh, sex talk video 10 years ago because I wanted to make the video that I felt like I really needed to see and never got when I was younger. And I, I worked with sex ed professionals and, 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 and stuff to make sure that it was the best it could be, and I'm very proud of that video to this day. Stuff that I do a little bit differently, but I'm very proud of that video. And in response to that video, a couple of charities reached out. One asked me to, uh, and commissioned me to do a video about puberty, and then another charity reached out and commissioned me to do a video on uh, porn, with the thought process being, 
kids are en masse gaining access to the internet without any parental guidance or supervision, and they are consuming porn at much younger ages, and it's breaking their minds and warping their perceptions of reality. As a last line of defense, if they've already got unfiltered access to the internet, it's better that they see a fun YouTube video being like, hey, just to let you know, porn is uh, not real, it, this, it's, it's fiction, than, you know, just getting access to porn, basically. That one was a tougher sell, and, you know, looking back at it, I definitely put too many jokes in it and didn't take it as seriously as I should have, but, uh, you know, for the most part, I'm still pretty proud of that video. I obviously got pushback from that video, and I've talked about that plenty of times, but I didn't think too much about it for many years. Uh, I did, I'd get the occasional comment being like, oh, our teacher showed us this in school, which, Okay, sure, I guess if a teacher wants to do that, again, it was supposed to be a last line of defense in place of, you know, a missed education. So if a teacher was, or parent was able to give that education, um, you know, and warn their child before they had unfettered access to the internet, that would be preferable. It's supposed to be, you know, in the event of something being missed, not instead of it, right? But then I started getting pushback from like political groups because it turned out that the video had actually been put into the official sex ed curriculum uh, up in Scotland, which was pretty fucking wild because, yeah, it, that was not its intended purpose. And I hadn't consented to that and no one had asked me. And yeah, that, it, it wasn't for classrooms. It was a fucking last resort, last line of defense thing, right? So it was a bit weird. And it didn't bug me too much, especially not the, the cri criticism that these people were, were, were saying, because these groups were very nasty. Like, they weren't just like saying this is inappropriate for kids, think of the children. They were also groups that were like, yeah, the, uh, gay marriage shouldn't be allowed. Uh, trans people should be genocided. Women belong in the kitchen. Like, there's a lot, of, there's a theme, you know? It's just uber conservative garbage stuff, right? But after a couple of years um, of this stuff, going on you know i did rewatch the video and i thought yeah you know what the landscape has changed so much since i made this video you know things like only fans exist now which massively changes the way people interact with porn and 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 you know there's that. and also yes i was like okay this video could have been better and i decided to just quietly private it because you know it was I, it had served its purpose at the time and i think it was no longer all that useful so i took it down that was a couple of years ago so Seeing that there's some fucking protest happening in Wales where someone's printed out my video and is claiming it's being shown in classrooms to kids as young as three, which I very much think is not true, is kind of wild. I'm assuming they're just running off misinformation and outdated half-truths, but yeah, that was very strange. Didn't love that. And I'd love to engage and be like, nah, 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 you're stinky. But at this point, I feel like someone might just kill me. <laughs> You know, like I'm worried that some super radicalized, whipped up into a frenzy individual is just going to show up and plug me at one of my own fucking, you know, cons in a meet and greet. Or I'm going to get some protest group show up when I'm trying to, you know, sign autographs and make things horrible. And I just don't have the fucking time for it anymore. <sighs> Very weird. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. Wow, you yes. are ready to bowl. <laughs> bevies. bevies! Bevies with the boy! Boy! Boys for Bevies! Boy! boy. Shut up you, not boy. you! Boy. Bevies! Boy. Bevies! Bevy, bevy, bevy boy. boy! Boy Bevies! Drink up! <laughs> it's Boomer Core! Beautiful! <laughs> oh no! Uh, strike! It was very out of focus! D Reich! Oh, she's zooming, dude! Yo, strike! What's he doing? <laughs> Yo, he's literally hitting the gwitty. Oh, fuck. Into oh. Ah, no! Yes. What's happening? Elliot is getting such a consistent seven. Call that shit, right, a strike. Thanks for the joke, Elliot. That was really good. Oh, he's that boy! Stop it, you need to stop. Team 11, we, that, we them teams. Charlie, give me the claw machine dance. Oh, she's going for it. Get those limited Dungeons and Dragons minions, please. Oh, the master at work. Oh, yeah. You just tickled his balls. <laughs> he looks very upset. Got the boys over this week, so we're back at it again, working on games. Maybe we're gonna make a new game. Maybe we're just gonna rework the old game, dunno. That's what we're here to figure out. But that was May. Hey, guess what? We have a fundraiser this month or next month. The month that you're currently watching. June, Pride Month. We're doing a Pride Month fundraiser. Good job, Tom. We're selling Aster Movie themed Pride 
themed merch again. So you could get a t-shirt, you get a hat, you could get a play mat, and 100% of the profits raised, plus an additional 50% matched by us, will be going to Stonewall, a charity that fights for the rights of the LGBTQ plus community, because the world is scary and weird, and I'd like to help give money to people who are uh, doing something to hopefully make it better. So uh, please buy a thing if you'd like to, uh, or just donate money directly to charity, or fundraise yourself. It doesn't matter, just let's make the world less scary, please. Thank you, I'll see you last month. Hey you, thank you for the money. Hey you, thank you for the money. money. Hey you, thank you for the money. Hey you, thank you for the money. money. Hey you, thank you for the money. Thank you, patrons. We appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.